Hello and welcome back to The Real Music Talks. Today's guest is Saritza, a female electro pop artist from Budapest. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad at all. Um, so for people that haven't heard of you before, like how would you describe yourself as an artist and a mu- as a musician? <clears throat> well, I think I'm, um, I'm originally from Russia. Um, so okay. Russia was born, uh, then US based, now Budapest based. So I've kind of been traveling a little bit uh, for some time. Singer, songwriter, um, electro pop, you said it right. I think it's pro- primarily where I'm, um, where I've been developing my sound lately. I've started as a pianist, classical pianist, and just a singer-songwriter playing on piano. But in the latest projects, I've been exploring a lot of more electronic music and um, kind of hitting in more of a pop direction. I'm still trying to decide how much pop, <laughs> how much commercial uh, sound, but it's, it's, it's kind of a mix of, uh, I guess, a little bit of ambient, dream, dream pop, you can say. Um, but uh, my first album actually was more even, um, they, they would, I guess, define it. If you had to put it in the box, I hate putting these boxes because it's always so difficult. I think you'll notice musicians always have a hard time. They like, they think this, <laughs> this is my own genre, you know? <laughs> um, so, but if I had to define it, it was like electro pop rock because I actually done some even rock elements. Uh, um, somehow I've thought that, that that was gonna be my direction more into going to uh, more rock based genre. And um, in a few years of performing, um, actually having the band and we've done a lot of gigs I, I i had like a tendency of softening up um doing something a little bit more um, um mellow i think some influences start coming in like um fk twigs was a huge uh, influence on you i'm sure you know her she's a you know a uk based and some some other electronic artists that just i've been missing to do something a little bit more um, less aggressive with my mm. music so i've been trying to develop um I guess some, something of my own, um, but it, it, is, it does fall into, again, if you had to fall into this kind of a, maybe electric pop with some of the industrial grunge elements sometimes. Like my new single um, that I will be releasing in Russian in a couple of months, it will have a little bit of those um, industrial elements, I guess you can say too. So I'm, I like to experiment um, as well. Um, that, that, that's part of why it's so hard to define my genre um because from the time when i started doing music which was a teenager it was just very simple like pop ballads playing on piano nothing really um fancy and then when i got into productions i uh, maybe i get overly excited (laughs) with uh, doing things experimentally so but uh, i do tend to have uh, um preferences over like trip hop electro pop um a little bit more mellow sensual um, type of music, mid tempo, nothing too um, like nothing too aggressively high tempo or something like a. So it's, it stays in the low tempo, mid tempo, maybe bedroom, lo fi, whatever. You, there's so many genres, you know, nowadays. Like you start releasing music uh, um, and they ask you to go like, um, you know, Spotify, different music mm. services. There's so many sub genres, you know? <laughs> so you have to like, really like, what am I? You know, like there's so many things I can fall into and they're like only three sub genres, for example. So, so it's always a little bit of a challenge, but I'm, I think I'm just trying to be myself, whatever that means in each release. And, you know, um, that's what I'm developing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, cause I can sometimes limit you trying to put your music into a certain box, especially when you're trying to be creative and bring in places like influences from loads of different styles and stuff. It can be quite limiting to say like this is the genre I'm going to release this single. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's it's exactly. It's, I think it's uh, you know, there's music industry puts so many um, um, not not the boxes, but kind of like expectations of what it mm. should be. If you happen to release this song in this genre, um, maybe you should continue doing this because you kind of give your you know you you, you create this recognition, brand recognition for yourself. So it creates, a, for me, it creates the challenge because I feel like, well, um, I understand how it works. Sometimes with artists, it's really great to, you know, to develop your own kind of a way over the years. Like, I don't know, so many artists like Taylor Swift, if you go with country, right, she did the same thing. So she she's done country for so many years and then, you know, she started doing electro, but she had such a big base in country music. So that's the main genre that she started with. I mean, some, so many other artists do the same. And for me, it just gets a little bit sometimes uh, just boring, you know, like you, you, you tend to like, I can't even fully release the album 
with with continuous sound. Do you know they say sometimes if you're a singer songwriter, like every song is a continuation of another song, <laughs> because like you tend to repeat yourself in many ways. So I um, I try to avoid this when I can, you know, because. Uh, I feel like as humans, we evolve, you know, like each year could be different from another year. So I think the creativity is being affected by this as well. 100%, like your music's just an expression of yourself. And it's not like you stay the same for 30 years, you know what I mean? So like over a long career, it would make sense for your music to continue to evolve as you learn different bits and bring different influences. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting how certain artists will keep their sound for the whole of their career. And then some artists will just completely take it and completely rip it up and start again and create a new fresh song yeah. that no one's ever heard before like yeah i think reinventing yourself is something that's been important to me constantly i think uh, because like i said i think as a human being there's some people that never change the hairstyle never change the, the way they dress and they're just mm. really comfortable for the rest of themselves for the rest of the life for me it's always been like i i want to be a little bit different you know like uh, each phase of my life there's some new aspects new people new experiences come to life and i think that definitely reflects who i am and um, the music genre therefore definitely changes as well but if i have to like really define i think it would be some somewhat uh, of um, mellow melancholic like this trip hop electronic sensual um with some pop elements that's what i like like lana del rey you know she's uh, she's, she's a great example she's been uh, like developed herself from from for 10 years ago and just continues with the same sound you know mm. and that's her like that's her brand and i think it's it's great of course for music industry to be in that um in that uh, to create your own brand for yourself um but hopefully that doesn't mean it's always staying the same you know <laughs> but there's some people that had like you said careers for like uh for exactly years, yeah you know, the same thing. <laughs> like actually from where i'm coming from like russia the, the one of the reasons why I escaped the market, I guess, because it's a, such a small market and there's not many subgenres. There's always this, um, especially when I was growing up, it was either like this really mainstream pop, like cheesy pop, mm. or like heavy metal, like weird, like a rock, you know, there's no like, there's not a, like alternative genres. Like I started listening Radiohead and that's not something that anybody would even listen to in Russia at that time. You know, all classical music, of course, classical music is a huge um, thing. So it was kind of difficult to, if you're trying to create something even slightly alternative, you don't have any way to express yourself there because people have these expectations and uh, because there's so many artists releasing the same thing and people actually seem to like it. Like, I love that album, please release another album just like that, you know? <laughs> And to me, it's always like, well, it's kind of strange, you know, it's not the, the best uh, way of expressing yourself. Maybe it is for some others, I'm not judging, but not for me, for sure. So let's break it down a little bit in terms of like your journey. So how did you first get into music? I think I've, uh, I've been in um, so many different, uh, you know, artistic ways since I was a child. I think since I was even five years old then in, in Russia, I started... Wow. Yeah, I started dancing first. I think I was supposed to become a ballerina. <laughs> that was my ultimate dream. So I started dancing before doing music. And then a year, a couple of years later, I discovered piano and fell in love with an instrument. Uh, like any respect, respective Russian, I had to take uh, like a music lessons and classical piano. So that was my main, um, main training for many years. And I actually was doing quite well. I was... Uh, competing in the piano competitions, doing different type of regional competitions and taking a good place as always, you know. So I was doing quite well with piano first. So everybody was expecting for me to become a concert piano player. But at the same time, I was also doing ballet. So I've always been performing, doing something. And then by maybe teenage years, I started writing something like my own melodies, expressing maybe a little bit of poetry, you know, those <laughs> nice teenage hormonal years <laughs> that you had to express through poetry. And kind of like, it appeared to me, well, maybe I could write something as well. You know, it wasn't just the performing side. Um, and I started listening to a lot of Western music. I mean, I honestly, I probably grew up listening more to Western uh, rock and roll, pop, uh, you know, starting from the Beatles, Queen, really amazing different amazing artists than russian music except for classical that was always russian music so i grew up constantly doing music uh, performing and um 
and and by the time I got to college uh, in Russia, uh, so they um, they had like a program, exchange students program, that I was able to go to U.S. only for the summer experience, just to study English that time and didn't speak in English, and um, and just can't, you know come back home and finish my studies. But um, that first summer when I arrived to U.S. Um, it was in Newport, Rhode Island, like one of the, Rhode Island is like one of the smallest states you could ever come to. But for the summer, uh, it was really perfect because, you know, nice summer location. I started working as a waitress uh, um, in one of the coffee shops uh, at that time. And I just had my demo, like a demo of Russian songs. You know, I, I introduced, obviously, you know, I'm from Russia and I'm doing music. I'm, I'm a student and, you know, this is my music. And they started playing, you know, they really liked it. It was like a... Just piano songs, nothing, no producing, no producing, no arrangement. And one of the, you know, one of the clients, I guess, in coffee shop, started, you know, asking, "Who's this? You know, what is this language? <laughs> uh, like, who is playing? Who's singing?" So they said, oh, "It's a girl that works here." So they actually offered me um, gigs. They're like, "Maybe you could perform at our, you know, local um, music venue." You know, that time I barely even spoke English, so I've, I've like, of course, everything was either no, or yes, or of course, I said yes. <laughs> Why not? That's a great opportunity. And that same summer, actually, after doing a couple of gigs in uh, local venues, they offered me to open up for the Trans-Siberian Orchestra um, right at the end of the summer, like right before I was supposed to come back. I mean, I didn't even evaluate the, the you know, the experience. It was obviously amazing for the Russian girl to come, uh, like, just for three months and to have this experience. But I think it was I was quite impressed with how everything was was going for me musically comparing to Russia when I told you everything was kind of limited at that time because my music was definitely not fitting into pop genre. It was more alternative. And so, yeah, I, I uh, decided to stay. <laughs> I said, I'm not going back. That's it. <laughs> this, is, this is cool. You know, I have this uh, amazing opportunities. People seem to be much more open-minded, accepted of uh, different genres. And yeah, and I finished my studies in US and I've stayed uh, for many years uh, since then, you know, so it's been, it's been kind of like a non-planned non, non uh, type of uh, movement. And, um, and since I've started doing music, uh, I've been in New York and different other states. I recently just kind of started traveling the last few years to Europe. And I, um, I've always grew up a lot more in British uh, music, even more and some even European artists. So I've, I've always been curious how the music scene in Europe as well you know you kind of this is exactly again the nature of how I function I get tired <laughs> of certain things like <laughs> let me go experiment something else so I ended up in like out of no expectations that I ended up in Budapest because that's where I shot my um my one of the my latest videos uh, slot machine it was a couple of years ago and I just uh, again was kind of unexpected I've met a nice group of people and uh, um, found some amazing locations here. Obviously, Europe is, that's one of the things that it offers, an amazingly beautiful architectural, you know, uh, older buildings and historical places. So I was able to shoot the video and, uh, and started working in parallel with other musicians here, um, some producers, like uh, one of the local producers, DJ Titus, he's been um, in different mu music projects here. Um, in Hungary, Hungary and even internationally. And I thought, why, why not give it a try? Something new, different, you know, it's a different market. Obviously, I didn't expect to come right before pandemic. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought this was going to be like, uh, maybe I can tour, do some uh, something with, um, because I just released a slot machine single and I was working on, I'm still working on a new EP, um, releasing some new songs. But I thought it was going to be a lot more, you know, extensive type of like a live performance. And instead, uh, we're doing online <laughs> streaming and online performances right now. So it's slowed down. It's slowed down. So it's been a different, obviously, I'm sure for everybody else, uh, different type of year. Um, uh, but it was supposed to be a little bit more of like experimenting, you know, traveling through Europe, maybe doing some, some gigs in different places nearby, like Germany, France, Italy, maybe something else. And obviously, Lon uh, London has always been on my list as well. How have you kind of dealt with the pandemic then, obviously, because you've had to change your plans quite significantly? Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those things, I guess many artists do. I, I've i done some live streaming um, events last year, um, right at the, in the springtime, specifically more like, a, I think, late spring, early summer. 
I've tried that. It's 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 a it's a great experience. I mean, I think it's better than not doing anything else. But it's different, you know. Like it's uh, it's not the same. Um, so I and I think you you can only do it so much, you know. I think you you don't want to. I mean, unless you like. I feel like there's some musicians that are more. They're doing a lot of cover songs, so doing sets of uh, different type of music. For somebody who's uh, who's only doing mainly original music, I, I feel like I have to spend more time on creating a lot more material than performing. So I've taken advantage of um, definitely writing a lot more music and uh, releasing songs. I think my, my goal has been just to kind of expand my portfolio of music uh, while I'm in lockdown. And um, it, it would be easier to, to have a lot more new material when you're actually able to perform. And hopefully I'll have some new repertoire because I'm not really um, uh, working on the album. I was supposed to, I was trying to come up with an album idea, but then somehow again, this whole experimenting maybe <laughs> thinking to to places so like oh i'm writing this song this is a little bit different from this they, they don't seem to fit into like a conceptual type of album so i'm just gonna release singles until something comes along and i maybe i can even create like a short ep um but yeah it's been mainly writing i think writing and releasing so i'm taking advantage of uh of just uh, creating a lot of content and including some music videos i'm i'm, I'm in preparation for couple new music videos as well so that's uh, that's been my prim primary focus you know what does your um, creative process look like so do you tend to write most of the songs and then collaborate with a producer like what does it look like is it kind of like evolved a lot over time yeah I think it's because because I think because of my roots uh, of a piano player I always tend to it's funny because I've always felt more of a musician first than a lyricist because maybe mm. I've been playing music for much longer than singing and writing lyrics. So I think my definitely my first like a spark initial spark idea comes from just playing on piano. You know, like I that's that's my comfort zone. That's what I always tend to like. If I feel like I have to express myself, I just go sit down and start playing. Could be like weeks sometimes. I just played some ideas without knowing what the song would be, like, I, I feel the need to, something has to come out. <laughs> like, it's that urge, like, something's coming out, I have to do it. But lately, I've been also trying to challenge myself because, you know, it's, again, it's one of those things you get so accustomed to certain ways of a music, like, music writing. And it tends to also kind of reflect your style. And so if you want to try to experiment a little bit more i i often even um try with the producers um to come up with like let's just do the, the opposite let's just start with the beat for example you know let's not start with chords lyrics let's just do some uh, like reward re reverse type of kind of a uh, writing so I, I i tend to do a little bit more electronic elements right now even with writing myself i i'm learning into getting more into production as well um, that I would love to, that's, that's my goal, trying to not just be a singer-songwriter writing on my piano, but actually trying to produce my music as well. So I try to kind of start with different elements of electronic, and, but it tends to be a lot more still like chord progressions and melodies first, and then, then I get into lyrics and production. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's interesting, I think, because maybe the way you start, um, how you grew up and how you became a musician is such a natural organic part of you. So when I tend to play piano and sing, people still sometimes respond even better because there's something more natural organic because maybe it's just part of who I am already. Um, I tend to embrace it too, because I think, well, if, you know, if that's what, what I love to do and people respond well, maybe I should continue um, having this. I mean, sometimes some people say like, maybe you should just do acoustic album release an acoustic album playing and singing. I was like, well, it's boring, you know, let me do this. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I tend to do both, but yeah, writing always starts with piano. I think it's, it's very um, therapeutic for me, I think, in, in a way, because of my roots. How do you think, like, because you said you were classically trained, like, at the start, how does that kind of impact how you write songs? Because some musicians have, like, no formal training and they take it the other way. Like, what does the play between those two things look like in terms of being creative and then also looking at kind of like technical chord progressions and things like that? Yeah, it's interesting. It's a good, good question because I, um, I think the way you programmed, um, I don't know if you know anything about this, you know, the classical music world. 
people get so good with technical training um they almost become a little bit like robotic <laughs> um i had the i had the, the danger of this myself expert that's why i escaped a little bit uh in my teenage years i realized because they're just gonna make me do scales like non-stop <laughs> and it's like a brainwashing as well so i i think there's that was a weird switch for me at some point when i had to um i was so disciplined to to, to pay attention to the technical part of, of the songs rather than the, you know, emotional interpretation or kind of a, a different part of my brain. So I, I think at some point, I think my late teenage years, uh, I was able to almost shift a little bit. Like I still have this really strong foundation of discipline. Like if I have to record something in a studio, I can easily do like, you know, 100 takes. <laughs> like, do it again, do it again. Like, you know, like I, I guess very robotic. Like, I exhaust myself because I'm so used to this vigorous uh, practice of training. But then there's another part of me, I think, um, I've, I've, I think, I've, I hope I was able to develop more creatively um, that doesn't get affected by this discipline. So sometimes it's weird. Discipline can be really good in music, but sometimes it creates this box and... And I've noticed more I get disciplined, more I get like a narrow minded with uh, music ideas. Like sometimes I have to really get loose, you know, like, uh, like you said, a lot of musicians don't even have formal training and they're so open minded. And this is what comes, um, opens up um, different channels of their creativity. And I, I meet a lot of classical people who, like I had a really funny experience. Uh, one of my uh, songs on the first album, I, I hired uh, a string like a couple of string players maybe three string players one was playing cello uh, a couple were playing um, uh, violin and i told them like this is kind of a chord progression so like i gave them a little bit of melody i wrote the proximal arrangement but i said just feel free to like you know fill up do some some um, you know maybe like even your own solo they looked at me like in horror <laughs> no, no, no. Like, give me the give me the script give me the music i can't do it <laughs> So that's kind of the mentality of a classical musician, you know, like they don't want to, um, normally they don't explore that creative side, you know, so I think it's, uh, it's, it's been a good challenge, but uh, I think sometimes uh, I'm trying to use this side of the brain and this, this side of the brain to, to accomplish different things. <laughs> do you think both are important or just, do you think it doesn't matter? Like having formal training and also like learning to have a good creative process? I think you broke up, uh, broken up a little bit. Can you repeat it again, please? Yeah. So, um, in terms of, what, do you think both of those two things are important? So, having some formal training, and also like learning to be super creative. I think so. Is for for musicianship, you mean, or mm. generally, in like generally speaking, for musicians. <clears throat> yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, it's it's like with everything. Musicians get sometimes so. Um, uh, lost in their dream, dreamy world, you know, like uh, you, you meet you meet so many musicians. I think it's a really important ingredient for um, not just the music business, any type of business you, especially considering that you create your own business, right? So being mm. a musician is creating your own brand. I think it's important to, to have a discipline because I think uh, the same comes with rehearsing, um, practicing, creating a time, setting time aside for, you know, this is, this is my goal. Like I can't just get lost in my bad moods, mood swings today because, you know, I've had a horrible response to something, you know, I, I don't get recognized by something, you know, like how easily musicians get so, so easily affected by um, circumstances. And also the, a lot of musicians are also, um, I think they, they, because, because it's music, they don't create the discipline because they think maybe that actually harms the, the creative flow. I think it's a really good balance. Like you can't get too much of that. You can't get too much of that. But I think both are equally important for becoming successful. Um, because I think without discipline, I can't see how you can be successful in doing anything really, you know. Music including, I think that's, uh, that's something that people appreciate, I'm sure. Especially when you get, as you get bigger, um, the schedule gets more full and, you know, more responsibilities. So I think uh, having that mindset could certainly help, I think, uh, you know, for me personally. Maybe some people manage to be very easy going with the flow, <laughs> somehow get to their goals, but for me, it's really <laughs> important to keep the discipline. Yeah, no, that's that's quite interesting. So, like, um, yeah, because some musicians would say, oh, it's just a case of right place, right time. 
Um, how much do you think it is purely just hard work and discipline? Or do you think, again, you know, you could put in all the hard work and discipline but still not get there? There still is a bit of luck. Um, what do you think on that? Like, Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the one that you always uh, try to answer to yourself. <laughs> I, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think for me it's... Um, I'm also teaching music, um, so I meet a lot of younger kids, uh, younger talents, and you can see there's some really like naturally gifted kids, and they know they're really talented because things come really easy, but and therefore they don't put any work into doing anything. So I think there's a lot of times because you know you're so naturally talented, and this this is something that comes so easily to you, you tend to. Um, be very passive with certain ways you know you don't tend to, you, you don't explore you even maybe your full potential because of this because you're like oh you know i'm so good like you know it's like i just i'll do and i'll go write something and piece of cake but there's some kids who just you can see they work so hard and it doesn't come that easily i think it's to my belief lately has been that if you really do put a lot of hard work um I don't, I don't know the measure of level of success everybody is expecting, but I think success does come to the ones who work hard um, to a certain extent. I do think, of course, the level of talent is important. You know, like you, you have to have this, whatever they call it, a little bit of X factor, uh, something, something a little bit special, unique. But I think it's just not enough. I think uh, you read stories of some of the most successful people, they say, like my work ethics sometimes played almost up to 70 80 percent of my success rate you know like it's 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 about being able to it's it's about commitment like i think if you're talented and committed that's the best uh, package that you have i think if you're just uh, trying to rely on i'm talented i'm just going to release the song i'm going to do the show and somebody comes and release, like <laughs> discovers me i don't think it works anymore like maybe it used to be um when the music industry was purely about you know like you can send your little demo to the labels record companies then they discover you nowadays i think musicians have to do so much more work um in order to be even seen because there's you know that the digital technology opened up so many doors for <clears throat> any type of musicians any level of musicians so i think you have to work hard and i do think uh, eventually if you spend a lot of time unfortunately a lot of people give up too soon right because they don't see any like a good traction and so they say oh, it's not my thing um i remember like i can't remember who said this but one of the quotes they said something like you have to be so delusionally believing in yourself in order to become successful because when you start believing in yourself people almost tend to be magnetized by this like wow she might she might not be that good but she really seems to like be, be so convincing in what she's doing or he or he or she is so it's, I think it's kind of something about it, I think, because you're so committed to your own art, like even if it's like the most ridiculous thing, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's probably work ethics um, is, is important, I think, uh, to become successful. It's, talent is not enough, maybe. But without talent, who knows? Maybe, I mean, you see like a lot of musicians, right? They, they, to me, like the music industry is so filled with many different type of, uh, music acts and some of them to me don't even come close to calling even talented they're just a marketing machine you know like um, or something created around them it's an act you know and uh, th unfortunately that's the act that n n that's not going to last because it doesn't have substantial maybe um, talent behind but so I think that that means um, you know who knows maybe they worked specifically on creating this art around them um, even some famous musicians, they say, like, I didn't have as much talent as somebody else, but I really worked hard on, you know, on, on my dreams. Where do you see, like, the future of the music industry going? I know it's quite a difficult question to answer, um, <laughs> but what do you think is going to happen, like, in 20 years' time, for example? I don't know. You know, it's a good question, because with all these influencers and bloggers, and um, I, I feel like music is getting more and more shallow in terms of the quality um i i don't know it's 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 something like i feel like we like with in fashion we keep repeating uh certain trends you know i think music definitely has that you know like we, we've gone into the retro now and the retro is, is a big trend so i think we're definitely going to keep repeating some some of the you know 
some of the waves, the biggest influences like 70s or 80s, I mean, any type of um, um, music kind of genres. But I hope it will be, you know, I think, uh, I hope it will continue to open up more doors for musicians in terms of not overcrowding market, but somehow um, creating a lot more defined subgenres that people can, you know, that people can explore. But I don't, I don't know. I think to be honest with the music industry in the last even 10 years, even just from financial standpoint, right? So all these platforms, they are not helping a lot of time for like, you know, for you to make any money from streaming services is, is impossible. I really hope, at least I hope that, um, th there will be less of a boxes, you know, like as a female artist, for example, I've, I've, I've been doing a couple of releases that had some sexual nature and, um, as an independent artist, because I don't have a support, I have to work so much harder to find uh, places where I can continue featuring it without being um, blocked or, you know, or just uh, saying it's not appropriate content. If it's a record label, you know, we, we both know it's it's easier. So you have no issues because you have a major support and, you know, Cardi B <laughs> does uh, very well uh, with, with her sexual content, no issues. So it's, there's a lot of double standards. I think that double standards right now for female, especially. So I really hope right now it seems like females are taking over a lot more and more. As, at least for the, from the female standpoint, I hope that it will become a little bit easier and less judgmental, less, uh, less kind of a narrow minded. But for musicians in general, um, as a market, it's hard to say. I think the technology sometimes uh, opens up amazing horizons. But at the same time, it, it just creates new complications, uh, you know, like with any type of technology. And I think the biggest thing with music is uh, is uh, just creating revenue for musicians, how to find ways to create revenue. Because now, good example, right, with pandemic, so many musicians lost revenue because the performance is a huge part. So it would be interesting to see how, like, the performance part will shift into maybe somewhat semi maybe like it will be semi online based semi live performances. I don't know, because they keep saying that with this new pandemic uh, activities, we're going to have, um, you know, like online performances will be a lot more dominant. Um, I will be curious to see how this will evolve. I think with new technology, because it, it, it has to become a lot more aging than it is now, you know, like something has to click. I mean, I always, uh, this is one of my things. I always like want to create like some virtual experiences, you know, like I, I wish like gaming industry, for example, is a huge thing, right? So maybe there's something that will be with a lot of live performances that will be a lot more interactive virtually for masses, not just for people who are into gaming, you know, like I think because there's a lot of already um, experiences when people have like, you know, um, I don't know, some virtual experiences, uh, D different types of uh, activities you know maybe a live performance musician would be one of them as well that's i don't know it's just some crazy wild idea just came to me <laughs> maybe it's complete nonsense but you never know you know maybe there could be some crazy cool experiences that can come from it but um i think it will continue staying challenging because i i don't see how the music industry will make it easier um in the last in, in the next uh, i don't know maybe decade or something but maybe i'm wrong hopefully hopefully it'll be different <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely see um so it's been great chatting today we're nearly out of time but one more question what's the next plan for you now i think um yeah as i mentioned i think i'll be just uh, continue to releasing new songs uh, i have um a few a few singles that i'm um, planning on releasing in the next maybe four or five months and um and yeah and i'm really into collaborations i've really been trying to that's one of the things that in terms of uh, experimenting also trying to get to the trunk uh, maybe collaborate with djs uh, a lot of people mentioned that my type of voice seems to fit well into this genre something that i've again never expected maybe five years ago but not to be more than, uh, even to this new experience so it would be great to meet them i love meeting new musicians i love kind of collaborating uh, creating something um, something different each time, even if it doesn't mean it's different differently, but something kind of exploring different genres, especially the like deep house, uh, EDM. That's not something um, that I've been doing that is on my list. I wanted to try um, get into this as well. 
Perfect. Sounds great. It's been great chatting today. Thank nice you so one. much, Daniel, for having Good me. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you for the chance to talk about my little, little journey. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. It's been great. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. You too. Thank you.